Good morning. This is Pastor Tom Adams of the Good News Bible Church. For the last several years, the heads of governments are saying that the religions of the world need to unite in order to have world peace. Tony Blair, the former Prime Minister of England, is leading a movement that campaigns throughout the world that says for peace to come, religions must agree with one another. And the head of our administration said recently that he too believes that religious unity is the answer. However, as a Christian, there is no way I could recognize any other so-called religion as being credible. First of all, true Christianity is to believe that Jesus Christ is the only means of salvation. In John 14:6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. And Christianity is not a religion. Religions teach that man must do something to appease an angry God. True Christianity is that God has given eternal life to everyone who believes that by his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus Christ has paid for all of our sins, past, present, and future. The payment Christ made is the only payment for sin. So his payment has to be for past, present, and future. There are many who believe that they must do works in order to be saved and to stay saved. But John 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What this scripture means is that the only payment for sins is death, and if someone doesn't believe in Jesus as their Savior, they must die to pay for their own sin. But when we trust in Jesus Christ, his death has paid our sin debt, and we need only to accept the payment he made as a gift, with no works attached. Jesus is the one who deserves all the glory for for providing his salvation. To believe that man must do works is to take the glory from him and try to place it on oneself. In Romans 4, 4, 4, 1 through 4, it tells of Abraham and how he couldn't glory in his work because he believed in the Lord and it was counted to him for righteousness. We're told in Galatians 3, 16 what Abraham believed. It's written, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not to seize as of many, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Jesus Christ. So what Abraham believed was that the Messiah was coming, and he would pay for all his sins. In Romans 4, it tells us that Abraham could only glory before man, because he was saved by his faith in the gracious work of the coming Messiah. In the book of Genesis chapter 22, God tested Abraham by telling him to offer his son Isaac for a burnt offering. Abraham was willing to do what God asked of him, because through the lineage of Isaac would come the Messiah, Jesus Christ the Messiah. Abraham was a great man of faith. He knew that if he slew Isaac, God would bring him back to life. Something else is portrayed in these scriptures. Isaac is a picture of Christ who was obedient unto death. Abraham is a picture of God the Father who spared not his own son, but delivered him up on the tree for us all. This was God's way of testing Abraham, and when he seen the faith of Abraham, he then provided, instructed Abraham to slay a ram for the offering. The ram portrays the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ, who is the substitute for a believer. And as I have said before, the Bible speaks of Jesus Christ from Genesis to Revelation, and it always tells of him as being the only Savior. In Exodus 15, 23 through 25, It tells of the Israelites being led by Moses under the direction of God. They came to a lake called Marah. They couldn't drink the water because it was bitter. God then showed them a tree and told them to cut it down, cast it into the waters. Then the water became sweet and they could drink and be satisfied. The bitter water stands for the evil world and sin. The tree is a cross where Christ died for man's sin. By trusting Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit, which is called the water that keeps us believer from thirsting forever. He's not saying we'll never have physical thirst. He is speaking of the fulfilling of the Holy Spirit and that we believers are eternally satisfied forever. In Genesis 15, 3 through 6, God tells Abraham to count the stars. This was how Abraham could see that the Savior would come through his lineage. He believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. This has been Pastor Tom Adams. I'd like to invite you to our service this Sunday at 9 a.m. and Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Until next time, may the grace and love of God become more real to you each and every day.
Goodbye for now, and thank you for listening.